Are you interested in editing video on your iPad? Looking for an alternative to iMovie? Well, there aren't that many options out there, at least not for editing video on your iPad. However, there is one application and it's actually better than iMovie. It's called Pinnacle Studio. So join me for this next episode where I walk you through all the steps of how to use this fantastic application made for the iPad. going to go ahead and open Pinnacle Studio and this is what the interface looks like when you first open the application your future projects will appear in the film strip that goes down the center of the page since I have none I'm going to click on the plus sign and enter a title I'm just going to call it new project then click OK and that's going to take us into the interface Okay, next thing we want to do is rebuild. You want to rebuild your connection to Pinnacle Studio and your library, so you go ahead and press the rebuild button. And this takes just a few seconds. It's basically updating all the media that's in your library currently. Okay, let's begin. First thing I want to do is import some videos. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this podcast intro video that I use quite regularly for my podcast. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And before dragging it into my project, I'm actually going to go ahead and preview it, see if it's the right one. It is. And I'll go ahead and grab it with my finger and just drag it to the timeline. And you'll notice that in addition to an image on your timeline you also have a storyboard to reflect what the timeline reveals that really comes in handy when you're adding multiple clips to your project okay I'm now gonna go ahead and add an additional video clip actually I'm gonna add a video of myself I usually include a video of myself with the podcast that I produce so let me just go ahead and just drag this little sample one that I put together and I'm gonna add that one right next to the title clip. So now I have two videos in my project. I'm going to go ahead and just play that see how it plays. I'm not going to play the sound just so you can see what it looks like. Okay now I have two videos. Next I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add photos to your project. Okay, I'm now going to go ahead and add some photos to my project. So right below the video icon on the top left is the photo icon. This is where you access your, your camera roll, your albums and events. I'm going to go ahead and pull up an album. And I actually set up one called Pinnacle. So I'm going to select that. And I'm going to go ahead and drag these images into my project. These are basically some screenshots I took of a previous tutorial on PS Touch. And I'm just going to go ahead and just drag a few of these to the timeline so you can see what images look like alongside video clips. I'll go ahead and just drag one more. Okay, next, let me share with you a few features for editing your video and photo clips. Let's start with video. When you want to go ahead and edit one of your clips, you double tap on it and it brings up a menu. You notice along top there's a trash can. Uh, there are options to fit your videos or photos within the frame. Since my video already fits, I don't really need this option right now, but I'll show you how to do that with photographs. You can control the volume of your video clips. And here you see I can also control whether I want to fade in the audio or fade out the audio. So this is a nice option to have. And let's go ahead and scroll over to photos. I'm going to choose the last photo on my timeline here. Okay, let's go ahead and double tap on the photo on the timeline. And this is where fitting the image within the frame 
may come in handy for you. So I'm going to go ahead and select my second option. And you notice that now crops the image within my frame. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back to the original because I'm going to show you another feature that's really handy and that's panning and zooming. Okay, so I'm going to click out of there and you'll see in the top right hand corner it says pan and zoom. You go ahead and tap on that and you now have an option for a starting position and an end position. So for starting position I'm going to leave it the way it is but for the end position I'm going to go ahead and zoom in like that. I like that position and so that's how I'm going to leave it. Now let's go ahead and just play that back see how it looks in the timeline. Pretty cool. Right below the photo icon is your music icon. Again, we're back on the menu on the top left. We're going to go ahead and choose the music icon. And as you can see, you have access to artists, albums, playlists, and effects. The effects actually come with the application. I'm going to go ahead and access playlists. I set up one called loops and I'm going to go ahead and drag this last clip onto my timeline and I'm going to position it right next to where the photos begin. I'm going to go ahead and scroll over and you notice that my song exceeds the length of my photo clips right now so I'm actually going to grab that yellow bar on the end and just slide it over until it matches the length of my photo clips. Let's go ahead and play that back. Not bad. Okay, moving along. Right below the music icon is what looks like a lightning bolt. That is your transition icon. And you have three different types of transitions. You have basics, you have pushes, and you have slides. What I'm going to do is try and import several from each category so you can get an idea of what they look like. I'm going to start with basics. And I'm going to press down on one and then drag it in between my two video clips. I'm going to go ahead and grab one more. Place that between my video clip and where the photos begin. I have a number of photos here. I have one, two, three. I have room for four more transitions. So I'm going to go ahead and now drag one of the push transitions. Go ahead and drag another one. Now I'm going to scroll down to slides and add a couple slide transitions. I'm going to go ahead and just scroll through. You notice that the storyboard and the timeline move independently and you can just scroll in between those by just swiping your finger across them. So I'm going to go ahead and play this back so you can see just how the first few transitions work. This is actually my intro clip. You can see how this transitions into the next video clip. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and advance to where the photos come in, show you that transition. So there's a different type of push upwards and push downwards. Let's go ahead and move over to the last clip so you can see how the slides work. And there you have it. So you have three different types of transitions, all which add nice visual effects to your video project. There's another feature that I really like about Pinnacle Studio and that is the montage feature that is right below transitions. So let's move on down. As you can see you have several different options. You have aerodynamic, extreme, instant photo, multi-layer mix, neon, tribute. And basically this is a way of adding a montage or multiple photos to a single clip. In some cases they're animated, in some cases they're static. I'm going to go ahead and choose instant photo. 
and just drag it to my storyboard. And as usual, every time you add something to your storyboard, it gets added to your timeline right in the order where it's placed in the storyboard. I'm going to go ahead and scroll through this instant photo feature so you can see what the transition is like. So it starts out with one image, full screen, then pans into all four images, and then back to the last image. So if you had a need for a feature like that, that's how that would work. So with that still selected, I'm now going to go into my photos, go to the album that I set up. I'm just going to go ahead and just drag some clips to the placeholders here. So now that photo is going to be for clip one. I'm going to scroll through. And you now see the placeholders for the other clips. So I'm now going to go ahead and drag one where it says two. And you wait for the image to appear. I'm going to grab another one, drag that to where it says three. Wait for that to appear. I'm going to go ahead and grab my last image because that's where the transition is going to end okay now that's one thing with Pinnacle Studio you have to keep in mind it's very similar to way video editing applications typically work for the desktop is that at some point they have to be rendered recently applications like Final Cut render in the background for you uh, prior to that you used to have to render it yourself and so you have to do that here there's a little settings icon right above the storyboard you press on that and it begins rendering your montages and your titles this just takes a few seconds but there's something that you have to do so that the animations play back the way they would in real time Okay, let's go ahead and play that back. Pretty awesome. And that's what's really nice about Pinnacle Studio. It gives you a lot of options for editing as far as animations, transitions, uh, controlling titles, how you want them to come in, when you want them to come in. Unlike iMovie, where you're very limited with those features. Okay, and the last feature I want to share with you is titles. Titles come in two categories. They come in mo as motion titles or as standard titles. I like motion titles, so I'm going to go ahead and work with one of those. Let me go ahead and just select a few so you can just see how they appear. So that's an example of one. Here's an example of another. Here's one that starts large and then small. And here's one that sort of combines the first three. I like that one, so I'm going to go ahead and work with that. Grab it with my finger and then drag it to my storyboard. It's going to be the very first thing that I do to start my project off is to show this title. You then go in and change the text. I'm going to go ahead and just add my Apple Podcast. And you can also position this anywhere you want. You can pinch and zoom with your finger if you want to change the size. You can move it up top or along the bottom, whatever you prefer. Then go ahead and play that back. And what's really nice about titles is that you can also add them as composites. That is, you can add text on top of photos. So let me go ahead and delete that for a second. And I'm going to go ahead and go to Photos, go to that album I set up, and I'm going to go ahead and just drag a photo to the timeline. So maybe it's a, there's an image that I want to start my project off instead of just a title. 
I'm going to go back to my titles, grab that same title clip, and I'm going to drag it right on top of the photo. And then I'm going to get a pop-up that's going to say composite. You're going to press composite, and they now become one. You now double tap on the area where the text is, and then you can go in and change your text that way. So I can go ahead and add my Apple Podcasts. Click done. Again, we go ahead and double tap on the photo and launch it full screen so it looks better. And as usual, I want to go ahead and render this so it plays back the way it would in real time. So give me a few moments while the montage and the title renders. Again, it only takes a few seconds to do this. And when that's done, we're going to go ahead and play that back. Okay, here's our title clip. It's that simple. So as you can see, there are a lot of features that come with Pinnacle Studio. Well worth it if you're interested in video editing.